I think he was an instructor. I think Mattis became an instructor in college. Is that right? Scuba instructor? Yeah. And uh, he teaches photography classes at the Gidlin Marlin <laughs> Scuba Shop here in Houston. Um, and he's a very talented both filmmaker and underwater photographer. And we're hoping he'll have something to enter next year in the film festival. Is that right? Shake your head, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no more uh, introductions. We're going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Mathis. So if you can go ahead and share screen and uh, we'll get your part going here. Okay. Thank you very much. You can hear me okay? Yep. Uh -huh. yep. Okay. So um, I. What I thought I would do is share um, four pictures here, and if there's time, I can share. I was prepared to share eight, but I'm going to go pretty quick. I, I think a lot of you probably have similar stories, uh, but it's still fun to talk about these things and share them. And so the the um, I, I chose a selection from the Philippines. We went to the Philippines a, a few years back. And we were there at Atlantis Dive Resort. We, we were at the resort for one week and we were on the liveaboard for a second week. And it was a great trip. We really enjoyed it. This first shot that I select, oh, by the way, let me say this now. All of these photos I'm gonna show you here were shot on a Nikon D300 camera. This is an older camera and, uh, and it's in a Subal housing with two CNC strobes. Um, either a 60 millimeter or in this case, this photo, I think the first one is a 105, but all the others are a 60 millimeter lens. So this first photo, if I was going to show you a picture that I'm proud of, of a pygmy seahorse, this would not be the one that I would select. Um, I feel like I've got some nicer ones and some better ones, but how I got the shot is quite um, a little bit more of a challenge. Um, all week I'd been asking them, uh, them being the, the resort operators, where's the pygmy seahorse? When can we go see the pygmy seahorse? And, um, and finally the day came and they explained to me that this pygmy seahorse was in a hundred feet of water and it was uh, kind of a long swim. I, I would guess it was a couple of hundred yards from the shore um, and we, we, uh, we had to kick out pretty far. And instead of going on the surface and descending, we, we did a, a, a very, you know, very quickly, it became a, a 30 foot, 40 foot, 50 foot, 60 foot. We're just swimming, kicking, kicking in 80 feet. And I'm, I'm looking at all the other divers and I start to get that feeling of when am I going to get my turn to take a picture of the pygmy seahorse? Is it going to be all kicked up? What's, what's my bottom time going to look like, man, I'm using all this air. All that kind of stuff is just racing through my mind. Um, a 105 lens, which many of you know, and, and now you see I'm wearing readers now, this is, this is so important. And um, it's not my favorite lens in turn, because you, you, once you look through and try and find the animal, and y'all know what I'm talking about, and you finally see it, if you're lucky enough to see it, if you lose it, you lose it. And in this case, I had a really good um, dive master uh, that, that helped me with his pointer. And he would put the pointer right near this seahorse. And then I would give him a little nod of my head and he would pull that pointer away and I'd go click. And um, anyway, that's how I got this shot. And um, I'm going to just move quickly to the next one, but you guys stop me if you have any questions or stuff, but I'm, I'm just going to, these are fun stories to tell. Um, I'm guessing most of you, if not all of you have, uh, have done the Mandarin fish dive or a Mandarin fish dive and have seen these. Well, my first time to do this, uh, I had no idea what to expect. I just, nobody explained it to me. And um, if you've never seen this or done this, I, I highly recommend getting an explanation from somebody, what is this going to look like? Where's, where is the point of photo? Um, you know, just the whole thing, the, the, the way it happens in, in seconds, um, uh, the way they travel up from the bottom and do their thing and then go back and, and, you know, getting your lighting right and, uh, you know, being ready for that focus point. And, and so I, I can't see all of you, but I'm sure some of you are nodding and you, and you know what I'm talking about. We did two dives at this Mandarin site and um, Mandarin fish site there in the Philippines. And the first, and they were each an hour long. I mean, this was, this was the specific reason to go there was for this. And the first 
night I did it, I, I got a few photos, but really it was, I just left that thinking, wow, that just didn't go well. And um, I was really ready for the next time because I'd learned so much from the first time and, um, and just being, you know, ready for that, how far up the, the, the two fish come from the bottom, how quick you have. Um, it, for me, the importance was being able, able to see them and they wouldn't let you use real lights. You had to use red lights. And so you had to be able to see them and get your camera in position and click, you know, and, and, and really quick like that. Anyway, you know, I probably have a hundred photos, but I have three or four that I, that I really like, you know, because for me, I was hoping to get both fish together like this. Then there's this photo. Um, are we good? Yes, we're good. Okay, the, or, the ornate ghost pipe fish photo. Um, so funny because we went to this dive site. I can't remember what it's called, but I know that they had a dead palm tree sitting at the bottom and, and many people on the trip would say, there's that palm tree again. Well, I, I think I was the only guy that loved it because it was a guaranteed set of, the, of pipe fish and uh, also a frog fish. And uh, it was there almost every time we went, they, all that was there. And, and I, just, I just loved it. And I camped out with these guys and and um, this, as well as some other photos, a big part of, of, of this over, over the long haul, I've just learned to come in slow and uh, let fish get acquainted with you, spend, spend maybe three or four minutes if you can, as long as it's not a drift dive, if you can spend several minutes just observing and looking and moving in slowly, the fish start to don't, they, they, they get to a point where they just don't care as much. And, and that really was part of what happened with, with this duo here. And another challenging part about this photo for me was trying to get them both in focus. So I would go up or I would go down or I would go left or I would go right because I was dealing with a very minimal depth of field. So if I could have one of them in focus and the other one was slightly behind it, then he wouldn't be in focus. And so I worked with that really hard. And, and, and again, I mentioned I'd been to this site several times and when I would come back and look at my photos and review them, I, I kept thinking about that. And I kept thinking, I wanna get them both in focus. And so I was able to finally accomplish that with a few photos um, where, I could, where I could get them both you know, in focus, get the exposure right. And, and there was a lot of angling up, down, left, right, um, I also did a lot of video of these guys and, and um, I was able to set up a, a little tripod there. They allow that there at Atlantis and, and, um, and it was a lot of fun working with, with these. And I think I got one more. So um, if you've been over there, they've got a place, I think it's called Cebu and, and it's a, it's a guaranteed whale shark experience. Awesome. And um I got a lot of pictures of whale sharks cruising around and really fun pictures. But then I thought, you know, I want to get a picture that really shows perspective of how big the animals are and what it would like, what it would be like to see the animals. So I swam farther away from the action, farther away from the group of people where everybody else was hoping for a photo like this. And I, I think I got two of them like this where in, in this case, you know, we've got, we've got three divers. I really like the one in the bottom left because this guy, well, I like them both. You know, the guy with the camera, he's getting the shot and the other person down there deeper is just looking up at this giant fish swimming over. And, and, um, and so this was, this was really a fun experience. Um, I might just, that, that's really all I had. I don't, I don't want to use a bunch of time. I had some other photos that I could share, um, but thanks for listening. Um, I, I appreciate being able to share some of these, and I hope that some of that was entertaining for you. No, it's very good. We Thank appreciate you. it. And I agree. <laughs> that is the most challenging thing when you have a pair of trying to get both of them in focus uh, when they're moving around. And so good job. I, I think the images you shared not only are a testament to your skills, but also to the richness of the Philippines. So maybe yeah. people that haven't been to the Philippines before see that kind of stuff and say, I need to go. So um, we appreciate you uh, stepping up and doing this with us, Mathis. And uh, maybe down the road, we can have something like this again to share a few more of your images. But I know you have plenty of good ones to share. So thanks a lot.
Okay. okay, I don't know if you can see me. I guess not. I don't have any lights here, but um, we're going to have to swap computers here since Ken has got his um, computer presentation on it. And um, yeah, go ahead and get some lights in here because we, you want to go ahead and get started or do I disappear when you do that? I may be disappearing now. Just say good luck. My speaking Yeah, you can sit here. <coughs> Is that going to switch over? We got. Hmm? Oh, come up here. Yeah. You want me to just go? Dennis? Yeah, I want to. What's that now? I need to come over here to see what that camera looks like. Oh, okay. Am I on No, it's okay. You want to zoom that in so it fills that screen? Am I okay? Am I on? <laughs> yeah, but we need to make it up. One time to make it We want to be able to see that. This camera has a camera. So we're going to have to use the camera for the. Oh, well, I'm going to, I'll do that. But the first thing I need to do is introduce Ken. Uh, okay, well, all right. Okay, sorry. So we got a little bit of um, work. Technical glitching. Okay. Um, that's quite quite a ways away, so I'm going to try to. This. This. I'm going to move this forward as much as I can. Tell me when I'm closer. That's as close as I can get. It's not even that close. You're going to try to get it with the Zoom people to see the screen. Yeah, let me turn the lights off. Yeah, if I drop it. That's not good either. This is not a good, terribly good situation. You tell me when I'm good. Down just a hair. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, Zoomers, can y'all see that okay? Yes. Yes. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Right. Yeah. Let me, let me turn the lights back on for that. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, this is a little bit like uh, the. Uh, Old time movies when everybody's running around with them. Uh, I bet you, what is it? One that had the, uh, the the cops. Keystone cops. Keystone cops. Keystone cops. Yeah, well, that's a little bit of what we're doing here tonight. But uh, I will tell you for sure that with Ken here, it will stop being the Keystone cops very quickly because I told you before I met Ken even before C Space. And uh, he helped run a trip for me and my people from work. It was great. And after that, we did a lot of other things with Island Dreams and Ken. And uh, I know he wants me to keep it uh, straight and quick, but I will want to say, uh, just as a plug, is that any time that you want to have a seamless uh, trip, one that always works and it's always well planned and you have the support that you need. Island Dreams is the place to go. And I think everybody that's been there will agree. Okay. Why don't we just go over there tomorrow? Okay. okay, Ken, okay. you're on. 
Well, thank you all for hosting me today. And uh, Mathis, beautiful shots there. I appreciated seeing them. Thank you very much. And congratulations on the Huff Festival. I know how much work goes into that and well done. So this is a program that's kind of been moshing about in my mind for a while. We've had two years, and don't worry about putting me, just keep the screen on, it's true. Okay, sure. We've had two years of, of confusion in the travel business uh, and a lot of change taking place. Even today, I was adding new slides to this presentation. And I think it's something that's gonna continue to grow. We did it a few weeks ago for the Chum Club and a few of you were here and helped me to add additional slides between then and now and literally changes constantly taking place. So here we go. Let's see if I, I welcome you to my office. It's mostly <laughs> island dreams with the occasional island scream more recently, as you can imagine. But amazingly in April of this year, we are 35 years under the brand Island Dreams Travel. And that we survived that long and continue to thrive. So it's been more than two years now that we've been dealing with this pandemic. Millions of people have died from it, and yet the world is finally beginning to come spin around that travel is reopening again. So what does that mean to us as dive travelers, and how can we best make our way into the future? So I want to ask very quickly, who has been traveling recently? We have a few child. Where have you been? Over. <laughs> All over. That's a good answer, Dennis. Uh, Egypt. How wonderful, Henry. Bon Air. Bon Air. Galapagos, uh, Costa Rica, Iceland. All during the pandemic. How fabulous! <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> so a lot of travelers here. Do you believe in the COVID nineteen pandemic? It doesn't matter. Whether you believe it or not, we have to play by the rules. It's become a very complicated, I call it a balancing act, what we have to do to make all of this work. So here are some things that we are considering. I'm trying to reach my computer. You want me to run it for you? Not anymore, huh? There we go. I went four in a row. Advanced research must continue up until the day of travel because things are literally morphing that often. A lot of pre-arrival documentation is now required all different manner. Now there's some destinations that you have to render a QR code that explains your situation in the world and have to present that. I'm just visualizing a little guy when you get on the pier in the Philippines, how is he gonna read the QR code but that's their problem, right? <laughs> Uh, arrival apps is becoming more common now that the destination itself has an application that you have to log on to and complete before you can travel. Many places are now making insurance, travel insurance coverage, not dive insurance, but in addition, travel insurance, a mandatory requirement. Well, here we go. Definitely proof of vaccination almost, almost everywhere, not all. You have to prove that you have been vaccinated against COVID-19 and some are requiring a QR code of that. You have to comply with these entry requirements in advance because the airline is required to enforce them. I was just reading this today, trying to figure out about the situation in Hong Kong and travel, that if an airline brings someone in who is not compliant, they charge the airline 50,000 US dollars per instance of this happening. So the airline is encouraged to force you <laughs> to play by the rules before you even get where you're going. Say fair travels, masks are still required. They're talking about removing that requirement on the airplane. That'll be an interesting thing to see if that happens. Requirements upon arrival, some places you have to be tested when you get there. Some you have to prove that you have just been tested within the last 24 or 48 hours or different sorts of stipulations. You need to be aware of all of these. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. give me just a next, there you go. Yeah, just just it, signal in the It may be that additional testing is required during your visit. This is something we're encountering right now uh, with a trip to Palau, that on the fourth day in country, everyone has to come back and be tested again. Next slide, please, Dennis. 
Safety at the resort and the dive boats. We're going to discuss that next, please. Staying safe on a liveaboard. Is that different than a land-based resort? Possibility of a quarantine. What happens if you're forced into quarantine or if your entire liveaboard is forced into a quarantine? The fun goes on. And mandatory testing prior to return to the USA. This is a big consideration to many people, but it's actually the least of our worries because every destination immediately was forced to find a way to accomplish the appropriate testing in the timeline required. Next slide, please. Okay, so advanced planning, start early, but understand that change is gonna happen all the way down the road. How do you start? How do we learn? The destinations themselves, if you just log on, I was spending some time today, entry requirements to the Philippines. It's an immense listing. Bonaire, I'm still trying to figure out what Bonaire's requirements are. It's many pages all fragmented out, right? But the information is there. Likewise, the destination, the liveaboard or the resort you're going to, the ones who have their act together have a very good fact put together so you can understand exactly what is necessary. Now, this is really critical here that and even though you're starting a year in advance, six months in advance, three months out, we're doing all this research, some of the documentation can only be accomplished within a day or two of travel. So don't try to do that three months in advance because it'll be a whole new ball game then and it won't be accepted, please. Okay, lots of resources are available online, just showing you a few, Belize, has actually a very nice, well-organized page. They were one of the first to be well-organized in this fashion and have been accepting tourism for a couple of years now, very effectively. Next, please. Turnifida Lodge just, just came through very, very recently. Fully vaccinated travelers can enter without providing a negative test in advance. This is a brand new change, I think, as of April. Next, please. Okay, here's another one. This is for Grenada. They're laying out all of the requirements. <coughs> Things are changing right now, especially in the month of April. Next, please. Here's an interesting one. This came through in the last week or so. Singapore is now relaxing their requirements. A lot of us for Asia travel are going through Singapore. So this is a very positive turn of events. Next, please. Now, Philippines, this is a really interesting one that we're trying to sort out right now. We have guests there now and a guest traveling within the next month or so this is a whole brand new deal with the qr code stuff and this is not the qr code on your vaccination card this is a complete travel authorization qr code this is just just happening now and a lot of our our guests were having a lot of difficulty understanding how to fill in the form the information that was necessary, you had to have a very specific address. If you were going to overnight in a hotel, you had to have the address of that specific thing and the QR code to enable you to go there. If you're going to El Galleon Resort the next day, they need to see a copy of your passport and your vaccination status and all that, and they issue a QR code back to you. They're issuing it electronically but what happens if people travel and don't have their phone? <clears throat> okay, now they're telling us that at least the tour leader or one person in the group should have all the QR codes on his phone in addition to having them on paper. And again, I'm just wondering who on the other side is gonna have the reader to, to digest these QR codes and understand if you're go or no go. It's an exciting new world that we're going into. Look at the technology we had to accomplish just to make this show tonight and the struggle we have, I just can't <laughs> wait to see it on the Philippine side, but it's gonna happen. Next slide. Again, this is a continuation. This is a great big page. I'm not gonna give it all of you, but here are all of the stuff that you're gonna have to provide in order to get this code so you can travel. And understand that it's not the same throughout the country, throughout the world. This is gonna to continue to morph. We just have to jump through the hoops or else stay home or go diving in the Florida Keys. That's our choice, let's go. Okay, is travel insurance a sucker bet? What do you think? Next. No. Yeah. Not anymore, not anymore. Next slide, please. Okay, 
here's what it's accomplishing for us, right? What happens if you're forced into a quarantine because someone else in your group tests positive and everyone is quarantined? There are expenses associated with that. Many other things, if the dog ate your vaccination card and you have to go into quarantine, who knows? Next slide. The lease has been very proactive about that. They're selling it for $18. And that's a wonderful thing. This is the only country I'm aware of yet that's doing you. Who else? Saint Martin. Same. Okay, wonderful. Same this is going to have to happen to more places. They're basically self insuring. But if the country does not, let's continue. Dan, for instance, and again, here we're talking about a travel coverage, not dive accident insurance. It's a whole separate thing. And I believe Dan sells it for a specific period of a trip or they'll sell you on an annual basis. I haven't looked, please. Ken, in, in regard to the dam coverage, when I called them earlier about the trip I did with BDI, I asked them about the COVID coverage. They told me it wasn't covered. Is it covered now? Go back to the slide. It's right off of their website. Yeah, well, let's, it, rather than me specify Dan, my point here really is you darn well better go and look at any insurance that you continue. You got Dan, you've got Dive Assure, this is travel safe. Every one of them, you're gonna to have to go review very carefully and understand what their requirements are today, not yesterday. When I saw your slide, it looks like it now covers COVID. Yeah, well, then that's right off the Dan site. It said it did. And, but, and they changed their whole travel insurance about a month or two ago. Yeah. They didn't, I, right? I called, they just reopened the whole concept of it within the last month. Like three months ago. So Let's so here's, go. A, here's a twist I'll, I'll give you on that. Uh, the insurance now breaks down. Some of them say we do not offer pandemic coverage. <laughs> Great. Generally. Uh -huh. But we offer coverage for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So they're separating the existing pandemic. They're hedging their bets for the next one. Or something that might wow. happen. Yeah. Oh, wow. so Wait till they, they base it by variant. We're this only going to cover the first <laughs> four. <laughs> this well, is the not covered for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because so the point here is a lot more. Mm -hmm. The point here is that the game is continuing to change. This is not over. We're not going to go back to the happy world we thought we lived in in the 1980s, if we can remember that far back. The game is changing. We have to play by the rules and we have to understand what the rules are. Next slide, please. So most of you hopefully have a card like this and are excitedly anticipating going in for the next booster. And then we're going to need a bigger card, obviously, after that. But continue. Next slide. The other point I make is some places are requiring that in addition to that little paper card, basically most of the rest of the world went with a QR code on the vaccination status. The United States fought against that and did not make it a requirement, but other places that we're going to are requiring that. So how do you get the QR code? Now, someone the other day suggested that you could just make your own and that sounds good. But I go back to that $50,000 fine concept there. Uh, what, what I said was, if you have a website, it's easy to make a QR code for that website. Okay, okay of the website. There yeah. you go. Well, this is right off of one of my coverage. I'm in the Memorial Herman Health coverage. So I just went to their webpage, right? You go to your status and here it prints you a page with the QR code. So, and, and what I'm just stepping back a minute, I was reading. Enough, maybe it was when I was trying to understand the Bonaire requirements where they're saying that if you falsify your data or if you have false statement about uh, your vaccination status, it's up to three years in prison for this stuff. So I wouldn't make my own QR code. That's my point. <laughs> Let's go on. Okay, so what do you think are our safest options now? Next, please. Stay at home. <laughs> well, that's, we're going to be getting to that. It's a land-based resort. Next slide. Is it better than a liveaboard? What are the differences? The liveaboard you'd think is kind of a built-in bubble, right? If everyone comes aboard healthy and the crew is healthy, you have a happy, safe trip. But what if one person comes aboard and turns out that they test positive as we found out? Yeah, we found out that the whole boat goes into quarantine. Dive trip is over, you go back to shore and you're in quarantine for as long as it takes. Case, case in point, uh, Jessica and Selmo had the uh, Antarctica trip, and uh, there was some a lot of people that were going down there to dive. I think they were going to get 14 or 16 dives, 
uh, on the way down, uh, somebody came down with COVID and um, they ended up with two dives and had to come back early. So, I mean, that's a premier dive uh, location and a lot of money was yeah. lost in the process. Well, hopefully, again, this steps back to the point of the insurance coverage, but it really makes you wonder about the whole liveaboard concept if this enforced quarantine is part of the game. It is not in all situations and all destinations. Uh, which options are safest next? Shopping at Walmart, take your pick. Which would you rather do? I, maybe, maybe we'll go diving instead. Next slide. Okay, what destinations that we're looking at are safest? Next slide. Mexico, which is obviously a fabulous destination for all of us. And Mexico is not just Cozumel and Cancun, right? You've got some of the greatest diving in the world in the Sea of Cortez and Socorro, big animal diving, amazing place. Mexico, did Mexico worry about the pandemic? Did Mexico ever have a requirement or a restriction of any sort? Not that I'm aware of. Just come on down, gringo, and spend your money. They just want your green papers. Huh? They just want your green papers. They want your green <laughs> paper, your money. And honestly, it's worked out pretty well, to my knowledge. I'm not aware of any of my clients having a problem and ending up in quarantine. On the ground there, they're being very safe as far as the resort personnel, the dive personnel, they're all vaccinated and wearing masks and being very careful. The tourists are frolicking and drinking at the bar, but it's all worked out pretty well. So Mexico surprisingly has, has been a success story. What about Belize? As I pointed out, Belize has been open for a couple of years now. I've been there two times already into Belize since this pandemic, and it's very well-organized system, sincerely well-organized. I did a liveaboard as well, and that worked very nicely. Next slide. Bonaire, Honduras, Turks and Caicos, they've really all been open for a while now and seem to be doing well, but the restrictions constantly change. Again, I point out Bonaire is just changing again right now. They're making some new, uh, more stringent requirements. Next slide. What about Fiji? They vaccinated 95% of everyone in the country before they opened it up to tourism. Fiji of the Pacific destination was the number one most proactive, but this is a relatively small country, relatively wealthy by third world standards, and they know tourism is their number one. Other than Fiji water, what have they got to sell? So they were really big about making tourism work and it's very effective. We've had groups there and back now, very successful. Let's go. Philippines is just getting started. We're sorting it out, trying to understand what the restrictions are. They are constantly changing. Let's go. Indonesia, we're finally getting there. I think in April, Bali is sort of opening up without quarantine. Our Wakatobi friends are expecting that they're gonna be hosting travel later this year. And uh, we're just watching to see how they're gonna play. All of these countries are learning from one another to a degree, understanding what are the effective techniques. Let's go. Where else are we considering? What other dive destinations that we haven't mentioned to you? I heard St. Martin, Galapagos. Or Sol hmm? Solomon's, obviously. Solomon Islands, we're working on Solomon's. It's supposed to open July 1st and we have a trip going July 2nd and I'm still trying to sort out <laughs> how to make that work. This has been a very exciting opportunity for me in, in having money stuck all around the world and trying to figure out how to make things work. Let's go. Okay, what other destinations are safest? Continue. The countries that value tourism, the countries that vaccinate their local populace. I said Fiji is 95%. You think Philippines is 25%? Probably not yet, right? So this is kind of what you want to look at. Next slide. A country like Belize, what we learned, everyone, the airport staff, even the taxi drivers, the transfer drivers, the boat drivers, all of them are vaccinated and they're tested every couple of weeks to be sure that they are not carrying COVID. This is a very strong way of protecting people. And I really love Fiji devised an excellent means of enforcement. Anyone on the dole, Anyone getting money from the government, if you're not vaccinated, you don't get your money. End of story, <laughs> problem solved. Next slide. What other considerations may come into play? This is an exciting new one. Next slide. 
How about this? Now, in addition to uh, health restrictions and who has the best visibility and the biggest whale sharks are political considerations that are going to affect our travel. Now, how do we decide two years in advance whether China is going to invade Taiwan or not? This is a little hard to say, but understand that these are issues, again, that we're going to deal with. I really don't think that's going to affect tourism in the Solomon Islands. This is just about money and not to you or me. Let's go on. Okay, airlines. Which airlines would we want to consider? Let's go. Okay, Singapore Airlines looks like a good bet, right? It's a good solid carrier. We understand that Singapore from the beginning has been working very hard on the vaccination side, on protecting the whole airport situation. Looks good to me. What about Fiji Airways? If you can go from LA straight to Nandi, no fooling around, that looks like a relatively good bet. Next. This is an interesting one. And I was again looking at this today, trying to understand Hong Kong now has a mandatory 14 day quarantine for anyone coming into the country. But what about transit people? I'm still looking and I wouldn't tell you yes or no. If you're transiting, just transiting through Hong Kong on a carrier like this, if you have to quarantine or not. It's, it's a question that we need to answer and it's something that could change as the game goes along next. What about EVA Air? We talk Taiwan. What if China decides that they're going to do more saber rattling? Is that going to affect our ability to fly through a place like this? It's a question. Next. Philippine Airlines. If I had a choice and I were going to Cebu later this year, I would want to fly straight there rather than to Manila if I had a choice, right? Let's go. Next. Any other carriers? What are we traveling? Cutter or other airlines? What are you flying? United. United? How exciting. What else? Cutter. Yeah. You know, this is, we're just going to have to look and see what looks like our best options, our best bets. I'd say the most direct routings, the less stopovers you have to do, the less changes, the better. Let's continue. Okay, I did promise that we're going to talk a little more about safe airline travel. I actually did fly this Hello Kitty plane one time. It was very <laughs> cute. Everything inside was branded Hello Kitty. Let's go. Tips for safe air travel ripped from the news. Let's go. You're late to the airport. Do not run onto the runway to stop the plane. This is actually, what is it? Dave Barry says, I'm not making this up. Let's go. Do not wear women's panties on your face <laughs> instead of a mask. Let's go. Especially red ones because the flight attendants can see that. Let's go. Do not yell racial slurs to anyone unless it's your brother or your sister. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Do not urinate near, in, or on your assigned seat. Um, this is real in the news. Someone was so mad that that's how he showed it by peeing on his seat. Let's go. Do not sexually assault your seatmate while they're asleep. Let's go. Even if they wake up, you're not allowed to do it. Okay, let's go. All of these things are in the news. Grope, slap, bite, choke, or punch the flight attendants. Don't do that. Let's go. Okay, do not attempt to open the cabin door mid-flight because you, they made you wear a mask. Oh, that's changed since last time you did Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's go. Okay, do not deploy the emergency slide to be first in line at immigration. You got to buy first class ticket for that. Let's go. Do not storm the cockpit until the flight has landed, and then you get to talk to the pilot. Let's go. Okay, one more. Being duct taped to your seat is not flying first class. <laughs> Let's continue. How do we stay safe at the destination? Let's go. What can we do overall? What can we do? I suppose if you're in tight spaces, you might still want to wear a mask in the restaurant and such, or at the bar. I don't know how you drink and wear a mask and do that, but we're practicing, we're learning, right? The places where you can maintain relatively a little bit of distance is probably better. Underwater is the safest place we can be, right? Because we're on our own air system and we're fine. What do we do? Next slide. Eventually we get to go diving. Let's continue, please. Okay, returning to the USA, this, wherever you are, you're gonna have to be tested to come back into the USA. 
And again, this is the easiest part of the whole picture because the destinations have this aspect well in hand. Don't worry about it. Some places it's free, some places it's 40 bucks, 60 bucks, up to $100. It's usually worth $100 to come back to the USA. Okay, let's go. <laughs> used to be anyway. This is Tina, our manager at Island Dreams. I've discussed this program with her a few times to get her input. These are the, the points that she wanted to be sure we had included. Let's go. This whole business of change constantly occurring. You can't fill out some of this stuff until 48 hours in advance. You probably want to look at it before then to understand what information you're going to have to supply so everything is organized, but it's going to be a last minute thing. And again, some of my clients, as they get older and more whatever we become as we get older, are having some difficulty accomplishing this, but it is a requirement. Let's go. Okay. Almost all destinations are still requiring that you be vaccinated. There are a few exceptions. Perhaps this will change and loosen up, but don't be surprised if the destination requires you be vaccinated. Let's go. Expect that travel insurance may be required and probably should be required. And I guess at this point, I've never been a big fan of pushing travel insurance, right? We, mostly self-insure ourselves. But I think in this current climate, it's probably a very good idea to be insured against eventualities related to COVID-19 or the zombie apocalypse. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. You must be tested to come home. Now this testing can be done the day prior, not even 48 hours, right? The day prior is when it must occur. Uh, some of the home tests are accepted, by the way, but in order to accomplish a home test, you have to have an internet connection that someone on a video call is looking at you swab your nose or whatever it is. So it might not be the most effective or efficient way of doing it, but it is an option to carry with you. Let's go. And the only constant is change. You want to be familiar with the requirements and understand that they're going to be morphing. Let's go. Let's just run through these. I wanted to remind you, just go, Dennis, remind you why we're interested, why we still travel, because this is a glorious world out there. And for all of us to dive into this ocean and put the pandemic and everything else behind and just focus on the joy is why we're doing this. And it's why we're not hiding under the bed and trying to figure out a way to travel. Let's go. A few more. And this was just very, just kind of scratching the surface going through my archive at this point. Okay, next slide. Is this the new normal? That's the question I got at the last meeting and it's a brilliant question. Is this the new normal? Probably not because the new normal is gonna be changing every day. <laughs> Change is constant. I love this one. The worst of all deceptions is self-deception. And if you look for, this is for you, Dennis, I put you If you look for perfection, you'll never be happy, right? Let's go. New normal. Beauty will save the world. And someone else said, but who will save beauty? Well, that's our job. As underwater photographers, this is what we're doing, is it not? This is the joy and the glory of seeing what we do. And I just, I, this is one of my favorite quotes of all time, just shut up and play your guitar. Next slide. Now, wait a moment, because I'm going to take a poll and the results of this poll are going to be published in either the Wall Street Journal, <laughs> NPR, Fox News, or Hustler Magazine, depending <laughs> on which one you think is the most credible. Next slide. Where are we on this curve of evolution? Are we still going up? Are we at the plateau of human evolution, evolution now? Or have we fallen up the other side and we're, we're struggling and kicking ourselves trying to get back up? Where do you think we are? How many vote for A? Oh, wonderful. I love that. Optimist. Like How many vote for B? That's probably, the, we're probably not going to last. Then. How many vote for Z down here? Oh, okay. Z wins. Next slide. I think we're here on the curve. Next slide. Okay. I thank you all for your attention and your consideration and your input. Uh, if you have questions, we can run them. But I think basically 
the understanding is that this is going to keep on changing and hopefully our understanding is also that it is still worth accomplishing all of the requirements necessary that we can go and enjoy this beautiful world. Thank you very much for your time. Cayman has really been interesting because we were watching. They're open and running successfully now, but Cayman was more cautious than almost any destination. They did not want to let any kind of COVID into the country. And as soon as they opened up, it happened anyway. And they have cases now within the community. But travel is working very effectively at this point. Good question. Anyone else? Hey, Ken, I, I just, for the record, for the Netherlands, uh, I, I was not suggesting falsifying any records. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't reported you to that. No, no, the real point is oh, that the, the QR code is nothing magical. It's just an encoding of a regular web address, a URL. So when you scan it, you'll just see the web address that comes up on your phone. Mm -hmm. And then you choose whether to go, go there or not. And my only point was, if you've got a web page, you can make a QR code. It's over the left and right hand menu. So it's, it's not magical. But well, I'm, I'm assuming yes. that the QR code on the vaccination is showing your vaccination status, not taking so. you to a website. I think it takes you to a website that has the information. So. Someone at DEMA was walking around with a little reader on his phone that, that he could look at your QR code and tell you your status. How it works is way beyond me. Please. Yeah, I have a question. Like when the vaccination started, I mean, I. We got ours at one of the football stadiums, and all we have is cars. I don't yeah. know when that ever registered with me. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know that it's registered either. Oh, it has. I bet it's registered. Same Last same time I, the federal government. it's registered somewhere, Henry. Well, I lost my car. Yeah. So oh, I called the city of Houston, uh -huh. and they transferred me to some department, and they sent me a form I had to fill out, and. I went to Bonaire without it. I had a copy of my car that I had made. I took a photo of that, printed it out, mm -hmm. and nobody caught it. Nobody even really looked at it. But that. when I got back, I had a certified letter from the city of Houston saying that I had been vaccinated and it had the dates, where it was at, all the information that's on the little car. I'm I guarantee you this is all being tracked. Yeah. The, another interesting thing on this vaccination, and I just ran across this today, I didn't even get a slide in, I saw it this afternoon, that some places it's now not just that you're vaccinated, but when you were vaccinated, how long ago since your next vaccination, I think they're up to 270 days, and then if you don't have a booster, you're not vaccinated. This is not everywhere, this is some countries, this is what they're looking at, right? So. What is, does vaccination mean is even a question. Is it just the first two injections? Is it now the booster? Is it the additional one? This is all the game that's playing out before our eyes. My suggestion, but I also read one that someone had, had received more than 300 injections because he was getting, getting all the real codes for them and then selling fake cards to other oh, people, yeah. right? But my advice to all of us, if we want to travel, is to just play by the rules, stay up there, keep current with everything you possibly can, and don't lose your car. I guarantee you the first thing I did when I came home was start to make copies of it. I scanned it. I've got it in my OneDrive that I can find at any place immediately and, and have multiple copies in your bag. Someone else asked me the first time, he said, should I laminate my car? And I said, did you notice that there's four slots on there? Oh, yeah, I, I just wanted to, you, you mentioned something just a minute ago. Can you see my cell phone right here? Can you see it? Well, uh, one of the reasons that you probably want to go with someplace like Island Dreams is, is that they will, if you have problems, they, they have answers. Well, one of the things I've been doing is, and Martha and I have been doing, is take and all of our, that's, that's my uh, vaccination card, okay? It's not too good, but anyway, I, I've got everything that I have, my driver's license, my the front and the back of it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that now? I do the same thing. Oh, well, whatever. It's, 
If somebody, if somebody wants to uh, be me, they can do that. <laughs> have paper copies, have electronic copies, and then have it some, if you lose your phone, if you lose everything, you can yeah. go to, uh, you know, an internet uh, station and log on and have all of that stuff available. This is just in general, your passport, your driver's license, anything else, your marriage license, in case you forget, all of this stuff, you just want to have it in multiple places that you can accomplish what you need. H having lost, had my passport stolen in Malaysia decades ago, I, yeah. I'm very careful about having a backup plan. Well, thank you all very much. It's I'm yeah. learn more. I'm going to add a few more slides for next time. Thank you. I guess we will now uh, get uh, moved over. You need to get the HDMI over to your hey, computer. Uh, any of you Zoomers have any questions for Ken? Because we weren't watching or checking y'all. No, okay. This no questions. I don't really have really a wonderful. question, thank but you. I've got some comments. Okay, let's hear your comments, Joe. Okay, last December, I was with a group of adaptive divers in Cozumel, and at, and at the end of the uh, at the end of the week we were there, we had to get our testing to come back to the US. Two of our people tested positive and had to quarantine five days in Mexico. Once everybody got back, seven more of our people tested positive. So that was nine people out of 42 that tested positive uh, on that one trip. <coughs> my, my, my second comment is I just got back yesterday from a two week cruise. In the middle of the two week cruise, we were forced to take a, a, a PCR test, I'm sorry, an antigen test and I tested positive. So I spent the second week of the cruise in quarantine and I just got back yesterday. So yeah, traveling during COVID can be an adventure. No symptoms. What's that? How Sorry. Are you, how are you feeling, how are you Joe? Feeling? I'm you okay. Uh, uh, once, once I tested positive, my wife and daughter did not, so they dragged me off into another room. Mm -hmm. And two days later, they had to be tested, and my daughter tested positive. My wife was allowed to sign an affidavit so that she could stay in the room with her. But then two days later, she tested positive. So during that course of that week, all three of us wound up being positive. That was not your best cruise. That was not your best vacation. Well, no, that was, that was not very high on my list. But yeah. I do have a free cruise coming now. <laughs> well, that's, that's, yeah, nice, that's nice, at least. That's nice. Well, we hope y'all continue to feel better and recover. So keep 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 on trucking. Does someone else have a comment and then want to go? The Zoomer? Hi, it's PJ. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. If you're going on a liveaboard and somebody tests positive, why not just quarantine on the boat and keep diving? Will they not let the the boat operator keep everybody away from the port? We don't make the rules, we just have to follow them because we're forced to. But that's a nice suggestion. <laughs> I, think, I think the issue with that would be um, the person that has it might need treatment. <laughs> well, we were all had a quarantine cabin set aside. So, bigger, bigger crew in the quarantine yeah. cabin. So they were gonna put you in the cabin and keep you there away from the rest of them. They weren't going to the dock unless Right, you really needed medical treatment. Mm. So. I think the other issue is just the risk of exposing all the crew members. You know, if I knew there was someone on the boat sick and I was working on the boat, I'd be like, let me off of this sucker, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, all right, any other questions or comments for Ken? Thanks right. again. Well, thanks, Ken. <laughs> Take a break. Yeah, let's take take a break for about three or four minutes or five we're minutes. We're going to swap computers again, so we're going to have a little break for a couple minutes, and we'll be right back with the photo contest. Yeah. Well, that kind of worked out okay, Ken. Yeah, it was yeah, fun. No, it nice. And then it's definitely a time to talk. Well, I don't need, oh, I don't need batteries. <laughs>
tell you what, I'm absolutely serious about it. It's, uh, going on some place like you guys that I don't know. I, I'm kind of lost when it comes to going in and trying to figure out things by myself. Well, we're just constantly learning. It's morphing and we're just keep learning and trying to keep up. We're getting ready to go to the Philippines and you scared the shit out of me.